Thank you very much, Reese. And um, uh, yeah, yes, what I'm planning to do now is really just to whet your appetite for what you're going to be hearing in the rest of the meeting. And I don't want to steal people's thunder. So just quick highlights from each of the six countries and then um, a quick look at some of the overall uh, progress uh, and, and developments, publications, what's happening with SAVE and a mention of the, say, of the March meeting too. And I think you'll agree that the predominant theme that's growing and growing through these, um, uh, these talks is how important a role satellite tagging uh, and tracking is becoming to so many aspects of what, of what we're doing. Not only training and getting the, the, the harnessing uh, done well, but also that mon mortality monitoring of, of birds and showing us whether areas are completely safe. Next slide. I'm going to start with Nepal and um, a few quick um, highlights from there and, and nowhere where tagging and tracking has been more prominent. The, um, the Vulture Safe Zone declaration just over a year ago that uh, at the meeting, uh, last year's meeting, has sort of paved the way, but of course that zone was defined by um, by where vultures had survived well enough to, to, to do that, to make that declaration. There's been an annual survey, we'll be hearing more on that from ANKIT, as well as um, the extraordinary uh, and very uh, amazing development of actually closing the breeding programme in Nepal because um, of the success of the um, of the program there. So moving on to Myanmar, uh, next slide. We have um, the consortium there, and that's one of the consortia that uh, Rhys referred to, which is a, a member of, of SAVE, so several organizations. And despite the difficulties in Myanmar, there have been surveys we'll be hearing about, uh, new grant, and unfortunately, part of those surveys, not only of the birds, but of um, pharmacies, has uh, shown conclusively how diclofenac is increasingly available in, in Myanmar. So um, the, it's the one uh, safe country where there isn't currently a, a ban in place, but also growing involvement of the vets there and the veterinary community. Um, Next slide, please. In Cambodia, we've got tagging results um, have, have been uh, really important uh, of just, just two birds, but showing the interconnectivity with neighboring Lao and um, 14 nests have been found, awareness work and nest platforms have been trialed. We'll be hearing more about that. Next slide. In Bangladesh, Again, tagging. Next slide. Um, tagging has been um, has taken off for the first time of a, of a wild white rumped vulture, and uh, Deepu will be telling us uh, where that's been spending most of its time, which um, isn't in Bangladesh. Um, is it? And um, again, training in in tagging methodology and follow up on the the bans where Bangladesh is well ahead of uh, most of the countries in terms of good good bans in place. Next slide, please. The In Pakistan, um, we've got breeding program continuing. Um, the diclofenac ban there is certainly not as effective as uh, we need it to be and the important results on that, uh, which we started to hear about last year. And um, we'll be also hearing a bit more about Egyptian vulture work um, not only in Pakistan um, later in, in, the, in the talk, but also um, yeah, um, uh, as one of the presentations. Next slide, please. In India, and uh, of course, India is such uh, an influential country on all of this. Um, and again, tagging is going to be a predominant theme, um, training in, in tagging methodology, getting permissions for, for tagging of wild birds and more players are getting involved, more 
um, research institutes are starting to do satellite tagging of birds in India. So that's very promising. And um, uh, looking ahead, uh, I'm very excited that that's going to be uh, something we'll be hearing more about in the coming year or so. Um, however, the safety of um, vulture safe zones or areas for release remains a real problem in India. And um, that, that thing of testing whether it's safe enough um, is particularly important. Um, and we've got a Delhi High Court case ongoing, challenging the government on uh, whether enough is being done to get the bans in place to uh, protect the vultures from, from um, we've got a new vulture safe zone um, about to be uh, funded in South India. We'll be hearing more about that later from Arulagam. And IVRI, the Indian Veterinary Research Institute, together with BNHS, producing really important papers. And just on a sadder note, we did um, report the sad passing of Dr. Jakarti this year. Um, from, and um, yes, that was one more somber note. Um, who, who had been on FACC for, for so many years together with us and doing much more. Next slide, please. The, um, I thought I'd just pick out some of the key publications from, from this year. And they're, I mean, dominated again by the IVRI led publications, but also from South Africa on um, uh, nimesilide, acyclofenac, um, and the safe one of tolfenamic acid all appeared right at the beginning of this year or uh, and during the year. And of course, the work in India in particular of IVRI is leading the way um, worldwide in, in this toxicity testing of, of vultures. Um, there's also uh, um, one on population trends down on the left there and Keystone Impacts and Isle Frank, who, we, who uh, presented at our meeting last year, his, his work has been published during the year and that's getting increasing interest in the Keystone um, role of, of vultures. Next slide. The blueprint, uh, which Reese has um, referred to, which is basically the recovery, regional recovery plan that we update through these meetings, uh, is the backbone to our reporting and the reports, which we will, um, we are still um, finalizing the compilation of those reports, um, will be distributed to all of you who have registered here um, in the coming weeks. And just to note that the blueprint structure has, was um, updated. Uh, Mary Davies helped to get that into uh, what I think is a better shape to make it more user-friendly. And um, uh, next slide. The, um, so that blueprint feeds into the multi-species action plan, as Reese mentioned, and the CMS uh, Raptors MOU it has just produced a fact sheet on NSAIDs, which has just appeared on their website, in fact. And next slide. But the um, SAVE committees haven't changed for particularly during the year, not, not very notably. Next slide. But that's the TAC and the uh, FACC, which has met a couple of times under um, uh, Ishtiak's leadership. And I'm quite excited that um, we're getting a bit more momentum for the FACC to promote um, a, public, a, a, a proposal from each of the partners to put them forward and try and get, get the much needed funding for, for, that, for, the, um, for the work. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Rhys mentioned the region, um, the RSC, the Regional Steering Committee, which did meet uh, once in uh, 2022 under the chair of, of uh, Pakistan. And we're just waiting to hear whether India will be taking up the rotating 
co-chairing role of the RSC um, to uh, continue the, um, the role that RSC plays um, between the governments. We've got Cambodia has, is now formally a member and uh, we look forward to a meeting so sometime in, in 2023 and to building on the relationship with, um, uh, with, with SAVE. Next slide, please. The 12th annual meeting of, uh, of SAVE, the face-to-face -face part of it will be in Nepal in March for, for the partners. And one, one feature of the meeting this year will be a more comprehensive review and stock taking of where SAVE is and where we've got to. And um, also we'll be witnessing the very last release from the, the breeding program uh, immediately after that, that meeting. Next slide, please. So finally, just to reiterate on the, the website, and one of the things that did appear on the website this year was the steps in banning drugs for each country on the NSA alert tab. And that I think has been a, a very important development. There's still more to do and we want to do more to, to get the mortality database up and running. I've been really hoping to do that um, before now, um, but Facebook and Twitter uh, expect a bit more on the uh, social media this year. Deepu has, and his team have uh, stepped up and offered to to help us do more than that. And I would just like to mention before I close now that um, I, I had uh, unforeseen absence in the last month. And thank you so much to Mary and Jake and Jenny for uh, getting plans for this meeting together in a way that uh, wouldn't have been possible in the past. So thanks to them and, and to everyone else involved. Thank you. And back to, uh, well, I hand over to Deepu to, to chair uh, the, the next session. Thank you.